I'm Michael Frudenberg and this is Film Masters. On today's episode, we're making an LED studio light so that your YouTube channel can go from this to this. Now, the LED studio light is gonna cost you $25 for the LED and the dimmer switch, plus an extra $10 for the stand, which we're gonna be making out of wood from scratch as well. But if you already got a stand, well, it's only gonna cost you $25. So, down in the description area, there is a list, and in that list, it has all the information that you're gonna need, including the parts and tools to put this project together. So, let's get into it. First up, let's have a look at the studio light that we're creating. As you can see with the dimmer switch, uh, it allows us to pump up the light and then bring it down again. Here it is with the dimmer switch in the back and here it is in my studio. Now, the reason the light's a little bit blue is because of the white balance I had set on my camera. So let's get into it. So we have 600 cool white LED lights. I also have some silver or chrome reflective cardboard, which you can get at uh, any art supply or news agency. And I've got a dimmer switch, which is 12 volt DC. And I've also got this power adapter with an output of 12 volt, 1.25 amps. I have some MDF, which I'll be using for the base plate. And I've got four 1.2 meter long pieces of pine. One of those we're gonna cut up so that uh, we've got one part, which is 10 inches long. And then I've got this other part here, nine centimeters wide, but the same diameter, as you can see, as the other pieces of pine. Okay, first of all, we're gonna make the LED back plate. So let's put some PVC glue on uh, the one piece of pine that we cut. This is the long part of it. Uh, so not the uh, 10 inch, but the, uh, the remaining part. We're gonna glue that onto the back of the nine centimeter wide back plate. I'm gonna use three nails to secure it into place. I'm gonna make sure that the top is flush, as you can see here. I'm gonna put another nail at the end of the face plate, and then I'm gonna put one right in the middle, and that will secure it nice and strong. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to paint this part now. Now you can choose whatever color. You may wanna paint it black. You may have a different color in mind. I'm just gonna stain it. Now, one thing you need to remember when painting this item is to make sure that the front part, this part here, is not painted. Now, the reason for that is because you'll be gluing some of that reflective card on it later on. So let's make the leg now. So this is where we get the three 1.2 meter lengths of pine that will make up the leg or the stand. So first of all, let's get the first piece of pine and I'm just going to run a bead of PVC glue down one leading edge like so. And then I'm going to get the other piece of pine and I'm going to lean it up so it's standing up like an L shape. Now I'm going to use three, sorry, four nails to secure this. So one on each end like so and one here and one here. And then we're going to repeat the process on the other side. So again, get PVC glue and I'll put a leading edge, put the other piece of pine upwards and repeat by putting four nails, one on each end, like so, and then two central. So one here and one here, like so. And funny enough, that is the leg or the support leg. So now I'm gonna get the 10 inch piece of pine and I'm gonna insert this at the very bottom. Now this will give some strength and support to the stand itself. So let's put some PVC glue on it and stick it down. And first of all, I'm gonna put three nails in. Now make sure it's flush at the end. We're gonna put three nails in, one at the end, one at the other end of the 10 inch piece of pine. And then I'm gonna put one right in the center. Now I'm gonna run three nails, that's right, three nails on the side that will go through one piece of pine straight into the 10 inch piece. So like so, and then I'm gonna repeat the process on the other side. Now the reason I do this is it gives extra strength. 
uh, to the base of our LED studio light stand. Now that's done. So the next thing is to uh, attach it to the base. Now I'm going to use the uh, MDF wood for the base. Now you can use whatever timber you'd like. Probably best not to use chipboard. Um, MDF is a lot tighter in construction, so therefore it's a stronger material. So what I'm going to do is just simply find the center of the board. And I'm going to get four nails and then hammer them halfway through, not all the way through, about halfway through. And then this will be then driven into the base of the light stand. Now to secure it to the base, I'm just gonna put some PVC glue there. And then I'm gonna put the uh, MDF board on the right way, obviously. I'm gonna check underneath, make sure it's aligned up before I drive those nails through. So obviously watching my fingers, I will hammer each nail in. So the first one, second one, third one, and then finally the fourth nail. And when I lift it up, this is what it will look like. Right in the center and flush. The next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna paint, again, whatever paint you choose. You may choose black, you may choose pink, you may choose whatever color that you want. I'm staining it because I got leftover decking stain. Next part of the process is we're gonna get the reflective cardboard and glue it on the faceplate here. So what I'm gonna do is just simply turn the cardboard over, obviously. I don't wanna uh, scratch the shiny surface and simply line it up and I'm going to simply draw an outline. Then the next step obviously is I'm going to use the scissors and uh, cut the shape out. Now, while I'm doing this, I just want to, um, uh, I guess, uh, talk to you guys about comments. So I, I would really like to get some more comments uh, on our YouTube video um, for our channel. We need the content. We need to know what you guys want to see. Um, at the moment, obviously, uh, we're going through the stage of uh, producing and making um, sort of uh, YouTube studio equipment um, that you guys can use um, yourselves for your own channels and so forth. But we really need... Uh, your comments so that we can start, uh, I guess, tailoring our videos uh, for you guys. So at the moment, um, what I'm doing is just simply putting some PVC glue uh, down on that face plate and I'm just gonna glue down now that reflective cardboard. Let's apply some pressure to it so it sticks. Now there's another way you can get your favorite uh, movie making magazines as a film inc or a hd video pro which is one of my favorite uh, video uh, magazines um, to weigh it down or the other one is just simply flip it over and uh, apply a bit of pressure and leave it uh, so it sets okay so this is where we start getting into the technical stuff i'm gonna get the led strip and as you can see on the back of it uh, it's, it's self-adhesive so you don't have to glue it so first of all i'm just going to measure it and what I'm looking for is this mark here. In between those two copper dots is a little scissors mark. And what that is is where we cut the safe part to cut the LED strip. So what I'll be doing is cutting each strip to length. So the very first one, I'm going to take the uh, self-adhesive backing off and apply it now to the strip up against the leading edge. And there's our very first LED strip in place. And now it's just a matter of measuring up each one and keep cutting it until you have no more LEDs left. Now on this particular one, uh, there's 600 LED lights. So that's how many we have in our studio light, which is why it's so bright. It's that the fact it's 12 volt. Now, if you're not confident enough to actually solder the LED lights, you don't need to cut them. You can actually stick them down and then give a little bit of extra length at the end and then bend the LED lights around and bring it back on itself and then stick them down. 
onto the face plate. So you don't have to cut them if you're not competent enough in sitting there and individually soldering each one. But I'm doing that because it's gonna have a, a cleaner look to it. Now I do have a diagram that I've drawn up um, on how to solder the LEDs together and that's in that download area in the comments section. So make sure you do download that. And as you can see, there's a bit of a gap in between each one, which is why I've got the reflective cardboard there. So it sort of bounces off any light. So as you can see, I'm gonna use a nine volt battery now. And I'm just checking each one, make sure that they're working, but also to make sure that I've got the right side. And this is the very first solder. So again, if you have never soldered before, um, it's probably a good idea to go practice before you do something like this. Otherwise, it's just a matter of simply uh, heating up the copper with the solder on it and then applying uh, a connector or a wire to it. Now I'm using really thin gauge wire here and I'm joining it positive to positive, negative to negative. Now this is the base of the LED light and at the very top, it's the opposite. So again, positive to positive, negative to negative. But as you can see, I go from one to the other, skip, then the other to the other, skip, vice versa. And it's the complete opposite on the other end of the LED light. So as you can see, it goes from one, it skips to the next, skips to the next. So it's simply a continuous line. If I was to pull it off the face plate, it will be in one continuous line still. I'm just gonna use the nine volt now just to make sure it's all connected properly. Now I'm gonna get some of the speaker wire and uh, this will be uh, connected to the LED lights and it will go through the dimmer switch. So what will happen is the power will go through the dimmer switch and then uh, goes out via this wire into the LED lights. And that allows us to use the switch to actually dim uh, the LEDs so that we can get the right amount of brightness that we want when we're filming. So here I'm going to uh, solder the red power wire to the red wire, and uh, then I'll solder the ground or negative wire to the negative wire on the LED. Now, it doesn't really matter uh, what color wire you use, um, as long as you know what the positive and negative wires are when you connect them through to the dimmer. So I'm just gonna use the wood here on the base just to uh, support the wires as I'm soldering together. So get enough heat in the copper. And when there's enough heat in the copper, then what I'll use is the uh, lead solder and uh, it will melt into the copper, which will give us a nice firm connection. So what I'm doing, I'm just twisting the two wires together as I'm doing this. So this just gets the wires ready. And then again, uh, just simply doing the same thing, uh, putting the soldering iron onto the copper and then melting the solder straight into it. Now, once I've done that, I'm gonna get some electrician's tape and uh, I'm just going to cover each connection separately and then I'll join them both together. Now, this just stops it from uh, shorting out. You don't want two wires, positive and negative, touching each other because what will happen is uh, it will reduce the amount of voltage going through the wires into the LEDs and uh, you'll lose the amount of voltage going through the LEDs, which will then uh, obviously not uh, be ideal. So I'm just going to uh, tidy that up like so. And then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna attach the dimmer switch. Now the dimmer switch I'm using, now you don't have to use the same model that I'm using. Um, I got this on eBay for $4 and it's really good. Um, in the uh, documents in the uh, description area, I do actually have the links to the eBay auctions for them. I'm using two screws to hold this in only because it's a little bit wide. Now again, if you're using a different type of dimmer switch, uh, you can obviously put a little bit more wood at the back if you want to support it better, but the two screws are strong enough uh, for what I'm doing. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, put the positive and negative wires into the out sockets. Um, and with this model of dimmer switch, I'm just gonna use a screwdriver to tighten them in like so. Once we've done that, uh, the next part of this tutorial is we're going to get the uh, 12 volt power adapter. 
Now the 12 volt power adapter itself is used for something else. I had one laying around, so I'm just gonna cut the end off and splice the end apart. And then I'm just gonna use uh, the pliers, electrical uh, plastic shears, just to remove the plastic off the copper. And then um, I'm going to uh, then solder some speaker wire, that meter long speaker wire to it. And that's gonna give me some extra length. Now you do not need to use a power adapter like I'm using. I just had one laying around. You can uh, obviously get one of these from a specialized store, an electronics store. The other option is to uh, speak to somebody um, in the electronics store and look at organizing uh, a power pack uh, that accepts uh, batteries so you can get 12 volts of battery power coming out. And that will allow you to um, uh, then, I guess, move your studio light around a lot easier without the need to having it connected to the power socket. I'm just gonna cover the uh, ends now with electrical tape, just so that the uh, wires aren't bare and they do not uh, connect or uh, short out on anything. And then I'm just gonna simply uh, put that wire into the back of the dimmer switch. So obviously uh, the power, so the positive into the positive and the negative into the negative. And then uh, the final step of this build is to get the PVC glue and just put it down uh, the wood shaft. And we're going to insert that um, into our stand. Now you can use screws if you wanna make it adjustable. Um, but I'm going to uh, set it as a permanent stand. Um, it's set to my height, so I won't need to uh, make any adjustments. And then we just simply slide that in and then uh, use a damp cloth to wipe off any PVC glue. And that's it. That is our studio light. Now, if you want to join the Film Masters and become a subby of the Film Masters group, just join us on Facebook, Twitter, or simply subscribe to keep up to date with all our videos that we'll be releasing. And that's it. And until next time, don't just film it, master it.